and Colonel Ivan Nikolaevich Utkin controlled their lives. The colonel was a Dieti Boyarsky, which literally meant child of Boyars, but really meant a retainer of one of the great houses. Someone who served a member of one of the great houses or who owed their position in the bureaus or the army to the influence of a great house. The colonel was both. He was a retainer of Director General Sheremetyev himself, and had gotten his position in the army due to Sheremetyev's influence. The village of Ruzuka was part of the colonel's pomestia, payment in land with serfs. As a serf in Ruzuka, Stefan had little say in how his life or the lives of his wife and children would unfold. A thought that had been slipping around in the back corners of his mind for the last couple of years came to the fore. We should run. He had his wife and children to think about, and though he wasn't over-fond of Father Julian, the priest had said some things in his sermons that struck Stefan as worthwhile. That God and the angels had intended men to be free, but men, in their weakness and fear, had given over their liberty to the strong and the vicious, in hopes of protection. Well, the strong and the vicious had taken the liberty, but they didn't seem overly concerned with protecting Stefan's wife and child from hunger and want. Maybe it was time to try a little freedom. But for now, Stefan kept the thought from his lips, even with Vera. They sat down to a meal of stewed beets with just enough grease to make you think there might be some ham in there somewhere, and talked about the goings-on in the village. Vera's friendly manner made her everyone's confidant, and mostly she didn't share what she was told, except with Stefan, but Stefan was a taciturn man. He didn't talk much, being the sort who thought of just the right thing to say, a day or two after the conversation. That night, with Vera snuggled against his chest, Stefan looked around the small room and thought about what they would need to take if they ran, and how they would carry it. Their house was next to the smithy and not in great repair. Stefan was good with metal, not so good with wood, but small as the house was and as little as they had, they would have to leave a lot, if they went. And if they went, where would they go? Vera hugged him in her sleep, and he hugged her back. Isabella smiled like a cat as she saw her mother leaving Father Julian's cabin. She knew what was going on there, and she decided that if Mother could do it, she could too. Three days later, she sat in the quiet room that Father Julian used to take confession. I have these urges, Father Julian. Even while in church, I feel these strange new feelings. Isabella was five foot three with golden blonde hair, blue eyes, and a curvaceous figure. She knew she was desirable. She only needed Julian to notice. And she paid attention in church and understood the doctrine. Besides, she had seen him with mother and heard what he said. They distract me from the contemplation of faith. She considered mentioning that she had seen him and her mother. Perhaps confessing her snooping would be a good way, but she held that in reserve. She really wanted Julian to want her, not to be forced into her bed. Father Julian was most understanding and instructed her that the best cure for lustful thoughts was satiating them. Then the mind was left clear for the deeper concerns of the faith. Also, he said, the realization that our desires can distract us from the worship of God makes us humble and more willing to welcome the Holy Spirit. By the time he had finished ministering to her, Isabella felt so calm as to be called languid. Life went on in the village, with Father Julian ministering to the needs of his flock. To those with a need to learn, he taught reading writing, mathematics, and other things. Increasingly, political philosophy found its way into his teachings, both from the pulpit and during his private counseling. Rizuka, Russia, April 1636 Stefan looked out at the fields. The crops were in the ground, but the children weeding the fields had a gaunt look about them. With the end of winter, the men had finally gotten to come home from the factory in Poltz to do the necessary work in Rizuka. Stefan stayed busy at his forge, and whenever he could, he made the bits...